Okay, let's get started. I'm going to be working um, today from the new textbook. Um, I gave you guys a task to do yesterday from the new textbook. So if we take a look, let me just get to the Google to the Google Classroom very quickly. Okay, so on your Google Classroom, I said it's the wrong class. Um, there we go. If we go to the Google Classroom, it's from this new book that I placed on the on the eighth of Feb. I've also placed some notes from those, the meiosis notes on them and the list eight. And so that's what we're going to be working from today. Your instruction was to go and start from page. Yes, Tepo. So please um, um explain the diagram in um the uh, uh, my user's diagram I'd like to some parent kit. Okay, wait, I can't hear you clearly. Just say again. And please um go back to the my user's diagram after you finish. There's some okay. there's something that there's I can several my user's diagrams. I don't think the one from this book is quite the same. Uh do you want from the one we used yesterday? From the notes, say you said the, uh, the one you said you must draw the Mises mind map. Okay, the Mises diagram that was from the mind to gap book. Okay, so I'm going to go to them. Are you talking about the summary one or are you talking about the individual ones? These ones, yes. What's your question about it? So, in um, profess one, one cell has four. Um, chromosomes, right? Then at the end of proof is one. Okay, there's one cell with four chromosomes, and we end up with four cells each with two chromosomes. Four chromosomes was the diploid, two chromosomes are the haploid. But now you got to be careful uh, because remember, we're going to have pairs in the start. So we start off with pairs. There's your pairs. That's a pair. That's a pair. Okay. Um, when we go there, we start off with pairs of replicated chromosomes. Then during metaphase, uh, during telophase one, uh, we're going to find that we have a splitting happening over there. Now you have two cells. When we get to prophase, you have two cells with two replicate. Now it's haploid, but it's two replicated chromosomes, which are going to each split out in half to form to unreplicated daughter chromosomes. So kind of uh, mesos one, two chromosomes divide into two parts to form uh, each cell having two, uh, let's say they have my, uh, one cell one, and four. The pairs split. In my two, the, the actual chromosomes, the replicated chromosomes split, okay? Oh, okay. Okay, let's, um, um, just give me two seconds. I just want to get into my settings here. I just want to switch on my, okay, it's fine. I'm going to leave that for now. Okay, so let's go to the questions because as we go through the questions, you're going to, there's going to be more understanding of when is it haploid, when is it diploid. No, I, I think the best diagram to study off by heart is the one from the Mind the Gap book that you, you had to draw yesterday. So that's page... Uh, I think it's 10 and 11. Let me just see. Yes, page 10 and 11. I think that's probably the best diagram to study over and over again. But you must be able to draw it later without having to look at it and also be able to describe what is happening in each of the steps. Let's, let's quickly go through that maybe uh, before we get to some of the questions. Okay, so over here we're in pro phase one. In pro phase one, our, there is our centrioles, they're going to split up and they're going to move to opposite sides of the cell, nuclear membrane starting to disappear. The nucleolus has already disappeared and become chromosomes. There's one, two, three, four chromosomes over here. Uh, 
crossing over is taking place over there. And so there's switching of genes between the genes you receive from your mom and you receive from your dad. So we create genetic diversity. The spindle fibers then attach to each of the centromeres. There we see them, they attach to the centromeres and they pull the chromosomes into the center, into pairs. And so that's how I know it's meter phase one because it's pairs, it's homologous pairs on the equator. Um, and then we go to anaphase one and they get pulled to each side. The pair- so where do you find, So where do you find this spindle fiber in the cell? Where do I find? The spindle fiber. The spindle fiber. The spindle yes. fiber is generates when, uh, look, if you take a look at the centrosome, the centrosome pulls apart to form the centrioles. And then a centrosome pulls apart, forms two centrioles that moves to opposite poles, and the spindle fibers form out of that pulling. So um, they are attached to the centrioles. So the centrosome, which is normally one device, they pulls apart to form the centrioles that has the spindle fibers in between them. The spindle fibers are not there during the normal cell life. It's only there during the vision. Okay. Now the spindle fibers pull, and they pull the homologous pairs apart. And so one goes to each, or uh, in this case, two goes to each side. During telophase one, we get the cytokinesis um, happening. So the cytoplasm is splitting. And now in... In prophase two, we now have two cells, uh, two chromosomes in each cell, and we have two cells. And so now we are haploid, we're haploid now. We, over here, we were diploid. After telophase one, we are haploid, but it's now re still replicated chromosomes. Now meiosis two is similar to mitosis. So the spindle fibers again split, um, the, the centriole again splits and goes to each opposite pole in both of, cell, of the cells, attach themselves to the centromeres, there's the centromere, and attach themselves to the centromeres of the uh, chroma, um, of the replicated chromosome, and they pull the chromatids apart. And the moment they pull the chromatids apart, each chromatid, becomes a daughter chromosome. There's a daughter chromosome, there's a daughter chromosome, there's a daughter chromosome, there's a daughter chromosome. We don't refer to them any longer as chromatids. Once they split, they're not daughter chromosomes. They're not, they're not um, chromatids any longer. And again, we've got cytokinesis happening. And as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four cells, each having two unidentical, unreplicated daughter chromosomes. Okay, Tsepo, you have another question? And please, uh, can you please move down Hello? a bit? Those are um, unre unreplicated chromosomes. Did they, yeah, so the, okay, so that's my, unreplicated, my those are unreplicated. So um, in anaphase and telophase, I've got unreplicated. Then I'm in, in metaphase, they are replicated, right? In metaphase, they're still replicated, yes. Yeah, and um, they are no longer called chroma uh, chromatids because, I mean, they are no, yeah, they are no longer called chromatids because they share the centromere from that replicated. Chromosome. Yeah, they each, so, uh, the centromere splits in half and becomes its own rightful centromere. Did they share that uh, centromere? I share, over there, they still share one centromere in meter phase that splits in half. Oh, so do they split it into half? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go to the questions because it's in the, uh, the questions is the way that they're going to ask it. So we need to know how to interpret those questions and be able to answer. And the more you answer these questions, the more you practice, it, the more you're going to have an understanding of my osis. Okay, so let's go to those questions. 
Okay, uh, let's start with the short questions. I told um, uh, yesterday, I think it was you, Kepa, but I'm not sure. Um, you asked whether you should do the full, um, the, the full worksheet. And I said, okay, you must, but um, if, I, I didn't expect you to have it all done today. So let's see what we can get through today in a 40 minute lesson. You finish the rest and hopefully we will be discussing uh, the rest of them on Monday uh, face to face. Okay, so which one of the following correctly describes the daughter cells after produced by meiosis? I want you to be very careful of this question. Um, they try to trick you sometimes. Here they say meiosis, and you're assuming that because it's matric, we're only going to discuss meiosis. But sometimes they fool us, and they instead of saying meiosis, they say mitosis. But in this case, they did say meiosis. So I'm looking for haploid. We call, uh, we're going from diploid to haploid during meiosis. That's why we also call it reduction division. And so I want you to make sure that whatever answer you're giving is going to be haploid. So there's a haploid over there and there's a haploid over there. So it's either A or D. Then we go to the genetic composition. One of the other purposes, and this question actually describes the two purposes of meiosis. If we want to reduce the number of chromosomes, and we also want to create genetic variation. So it's important for us to have a different genetic, a different genetic composition. So the correct answer for 1.1 would have been A, because those are the two functions of meiosis. It's reduction division. We go from diploid to haploid, a single set of chromosomes from a double set of chromosomes. And we create genetic diversity. How do we do that? We create it by crossing over during prophase one. And we get created by random arrangement during metaphase one. Let's go on to 1.2. If there are 38 chromosomes, now this is a karyotype question. If there are 38 chromosomes in the body cell of a donkey, how many of these chromosomes are autosomes? Now I'm, I need to think to myself, okay, male, female, male, female, male, female. Okay, so I know a donkey owned is either a male or a female. In the case of some other organisms, we do find some other organisms actually having more than one sex, but we're not even gonna go into those ones. Um, in, in donkeys, there's either male or female, and so the chromosomes or the gonosomes, the gonosomes, there will be two, which means we need to take the total number of chromosomes and we need to minus two. How many worry about me? Okay, we need to minus two for the gonosomes to find the number of autosomes or normal body cells. And those will then of course be 36. 38 minus two is 36. The first 36 chromosomes are always your autosomes and the last two are your gonosomes that determine the sex. Use the sketch below to identify the processes one, two, and three. This is the life cycle actually of, uh, of organisms or of humans um, that are, or of organisms that go through sexual reproduction. Okay, so we're gonna go through a zygote to a multicellular um, organism. So I need mitosis to happen. I need normal division to happen. So that's mitosis. So number one has to be mitosis. And already I've got the correct answer because that's the only one that has mitosis uh, for number one. But let's go through the rest and just double check on it. We go to number two. Multicellular uh, organism forms a gamete. So we form gametes through mitosis reduction division. We go from diploid to haploid. The gamete is haploid. Sperm cells are haploid. Egg cells are haploid. So reduction division, meiosis, and in C that is correct, just like we wanted it to be. And then we take the two gametes that are both haploid, and we take one in, uh, one in and that gives us two in. It gives us diploid again. And that process is called fertilization. And so C is definitely the correct answer.
Guys, 1.4, cytokinesis is a term that describes cyto, cytoplasm. Kinesis means to cut, to cut the cytoplasm. Okay, so cytoplasmic division is the answer over there. The diagram below represents six different phases of meiosis taking place in a particular cell. This is typical of, a, um, of this type of question on my, meiosis. And so um, they're probably going to ask you to take a look at maybe um, one of the questions they can ask is to sort them according to, um, because they won't be necessarily in sequence. Um, they're not giving all the steps here. They might ask you to identify each of them. But in this case, they're just asking us, um, the job I'm going to give you a chance now, they're just asking us what oh, the diploid number of chromosomes. We'll take a look now. Metabu, what is your question? So what's um, karyokinesis or something like that? Okay, karyokinesis is karyo, and uh, that's where we have a bit of an advantage uh, as Afrikaans people, it's closer to the Latin than the English version that you are getting. Um, uh, karyokinesis, karyo, the K-A-R stands for the, the nucleus. And in, um, if, you, if you take a look at the Latin word for nucleus, it, it's, uh, so, um, the, the pronunciation would be similar to karen, karen. And karyo, karyo, that means the nucleus, it's to split the nucleus. So karyokinesis is to split the nucleus. And uh, what we find there is it's then either one or two processes. It's either mitosis or mitosis where karyokinesis is going to happen. So splitting of the nucleus is karyokinesis. Good question. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to this question over here. I want to know what was the diploid number of chromosomes over here. Okay, so let's take a look over here. Um, I can see this, this over here would have been anaphase one. In anaphase one, I'm still, I'm still diploid. And so if we count the number of chromosomes inside um, anaphase one, one, two, three, Four. Um, this would have been prophase one because how do I know that? I know it because it's uh, the chromosomes are still replicated. There's still all excess. And again, one, two, three, four of them. Okay, so I know there's four. And even if we go over here, this is anaphase, anaphase two. Um, and what we're going to find, we find the, the splitting up of single chromosomes. And so, uh, or the splitting of the single chromosomes. And in each case, those would have been attached together. If we go to meet, this would, would have been meter phase two. There's only one, two, one, two. Okay, so the diploid number would have been four, four, B. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So where we, those phases where we see that it's still meiosis one, we have four chromosomes in each cell. Just remember when we're taking a look at something like that, that's already a single cell and that's another cell. That's already two cells. That's already two cells, two cells. That's already two cells over there. Those are already one, two, three, four cells that we have over there. And let's move on to 1.5.2. Uh, okay, as I predicted, they're asking us now the correct sequence from the start of meiosis till the end. Okay, and for that, you actually, it's a bit more complicated than just saying this is the sequence. We have to now go and take a look. We have to name each of these phases. So this would have been meter phase one. It's already split, cytokinesis has happened. There's only two cells, but we haven't gone into chromosome mode yet over there. So that's meter phase one. And over there, which one have we not identified yet? We haven't identified that would have been meter phase two. Okay, so now we always remember P, M, A, T, I, so I, think I the on the map. Number four. So again, number four, what about number four?
What question do we have about number four? Oh, sorry. My mistake. I see what you're not me to face. I'm I'm getting confusing you here. Telephase. Telephase one, not me to phase one. Okay, apologies for that. Ron, that's probably was your question as well. Apologies. No, sir. I wanted to ask how come it's well, why is the like strings? The why why aren't there any chromosomes? What happened there? Uh, which one? Four and one. Four and one. Okay, those are already, remember four, we're at the end. So it's not chromosomes anymore. They're becoming, they're becoming a, a, new, they're becoming a, a nucleolus once again. In the case of number four, we, we have telophase one. It stays such a short period in that stage before it forms chromosomes again. Um, that we normally, we kind of almost want to skip telophase one happening. But, but it actually, actually does start forming a nucleolus again, um, but it barely gets a chance to form a nuclear membrane before it starts going into prophase two. But that actually, I'm I'm still... that's a nucleolus there. That's a nucleolus, that's a nucleolus, that's a nucleolus, that's a nucleolus. Those are all nucleoli. Yes, sir. Just... I'm just a little bit confused on the mitosis part of telophase here. Okay, mitosis part of telophase. Okay, let's take a look at the diagrams as it's given in the new book. And maybe we can get some clarity from that. No, I mean the, the telophase parts of mitosis, sorry. Okay, so let's go to telophase. There's anaphase and there's telophase. Do you see it's not drawing it as a nucleolus there? But it could have, it could have actually gone and start. It starts doing this, and then it goes back and it does that. It actually goes back and goes almost directly into prophase. So we barely ever find. Um, normally, if we take a look at the diagram that they give in the question, normally we don't see it like that we would actually see it as chromosomes. But the nucleolus does start to reform, but it barely reforms and forms um, the chromosomes again. It's like a, a knee-jerk reaction that it has. And so what's those strings between the, chrome, um, the nucleus? The strings between the nucleus. Oh, uh, I'm going to just gonna, I'm going to try and highlight it. Let me just erase something, a few things here. Are you talking about? Where's my highlighter now? Are you talking about those strings over there? Yeah. Okay. Those are still the remains of the spindle fibers, and they're going to disappear in a moment. Those are the remains of the spindle fibers. The same as we have here. Same as we have there. Same there. It's it's just pieces of the spindle fiber that remain. Okay. Let's Thank take you, a look at the sequence here. Okay, so remember, uh, we're gonna go through um, this is my pen here, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, interphase, and this is gonna be one, 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 and one. Then we're gonna go through uh, uh, sorry, I'm on I be on the mat. Take it that way around. Same sequence, just we're starting in a different place and we're being on the mat twice. There we go. So that's one, 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 two, 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 two. And so I'm looking for prophase one. Yes, I have it. So it's going to start with five and then we're going to go to meter phase one. Is meter phase one shown? Yeah, no. We're going to go to anaphase one. Yes, anaphase one is shown. It is uh, prophase, sorry, prophase one was number three, anaphase one was number five. Um, let's take telophase one, it was number four. Uh, prophase two, was prophase two shown? Uh, anaphase one, uh, prophase two, no, I don't see it shown. Metaphase two, yes, it's number two. Anaphase two, anaphase two, yes, number six, and we end off with then 
telephases. There's that telephase. I'm switching my phases here. The telephase two, um, sir? which is number one. Three five four two six one. Three five four. Mistake. There we go. C is the correct answer. Okay. Um, sir. Why is six pro phase two? Isn't that um anaphase or something? That is anaphase uh, number six. Are yes, you talking? I, know, I did say uh, six is anaphase two. Oh, I, I read Anaphase. something else. Sorry, sir. Okay. Okay, so let's go to 1.6. Interphase is the stage during uh, which nothing happens. No? Okay, sometimes nothing happens, but let's take a look at all the options. A dividing cell forms a spindle. No. Cytokinesis occurs. No. A cell grows and duplicates its DNA. Yes, replication of DNA. So the most likely answer is D for 1.6. So what's, uh, what's the relationship between interphase and mitosis? Okay, there's actually no relationship. Interphase is actually not part of, technically, not part of mitosis. It's the phase that happens in between division, in between mitosis. And that's why it's called interphase, because it happens in between um, stages of mitosis. And how do you define my, uh, mitosis? Mitosis is the, um, I, would say, I would define it as the splitting of cells. The splitting of and cells. The vision of the cells. Splitting, and from the splitting of cells, um, um, can you say interface device that, that uh, does it also have a relation, interface, does interface have a relationship with um, protein synthesis? Yes, protein synthesis will happen during interface because you want growth to happen of the cell. So you want proteins to form. Yeah, okay. Let's go to our A only B only question. 2.1 chromosome numbers changes from diploid to haploid. Okay, so it's reduction division, diploid to happen, haploid. So it's only A only, it's only meiosis. So A only, don't forget to write the only. Okay, so reduction division going from diploid to haploid takes place to form sex cells is B only in this case, which is meiosis. So it's B only because I'm forming sex cells, sperm cells or egg cells. And then replication of DNA takes place before both. We need it to happen before both. So it's A and B. Um, the, the, actually the correct way to write that is both. A and B. Cross I don't understand why. You don't understand why replication happens before both. No, I don't, yes, I don't understand why it's simple. Can you please explain? Okay, uh, just say again, which one do I need to explain? Can you please explain 2.3? Okay, 2.3. Okay, so when is replication taking place? If I'm taking a cell, okay, and um, I'm taking the DNA of a cell. Let's, uh, let's draw the chromosomes rather, the replication. Let's take a look at a, a cell. And if I go now and I, uh, let's say over here, I've got two chromosomes, okay? So I've got two chromosomes in the cell. And I need to divide the cell, okay? so. If I've got two chromosomes in the cell, what am I gonna end up with? I'm gonna end up with one chromosome if I divide them, correct. But now do I want one chromosome or do I want two chromosomes? Do I want it to be exactly the same or do I want it to have half the number of chromosomes after mitosis? No, I want it to have exactly the same. So what do I need to do? I need to double up on my DNA. If I don't double up on my DNA, each time my cell divides, I'm going to end with half the number of chromosomes I had in the first place. 
So I need to go through replication before DNA. And even before meiosis, remember that splitting happens twice. So if that splitting doesn't happen twice, I'm going to end up with a quarter number of chromosomes and not a half number of chromosomes like I had in the first case. So it means that I need to check my number of chromosomes. My number of chromosomes in a normal body cell always needs to be the same. So before I split the cell, I need to double up on the DNA. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with half the DNA every time a cell splits. And so that's why replication needs to happen before any cell division, including meiosis. Because the idea behind meiosis is that I'm going to end up with a sperm cell that's going to have half the number. And it's going to fuse with an egg cell that's got half a number. And we, when they come together, it's going to form a zygote that has a full number. Now, if I didn't go through replication, I would have had over here only half an N and only there half an N and over here only one N. And I can't have that. I need a diploid number of chromosomes in a normal body cell. Yes, I understand. Okay. Crossing over takes place, okay. Uh, during prophase in mitosis, no. No, no, no. No crossing over. No genetic mixing in mitosis. But it happens in prophase one during meiosis. So the answer for that will be B only. Chromosomes are pulled to opposite poles during anaphase in mitosis. Yes, chromosomes will be pulled. Anaphase one in meiosis, yes, both of them. So that's both A and B. Okay, uh, Latobi, you have a question? So does uh, proof um, crossing over also happen in proof is two meiosis? No, uh, it can't. Uh, let me show you why. In prophase one, let me just go to the top. In prophase one, I've got bivalent pairs that can lie next to one another. I've got homologous pairs and they can lie next to one another. And so that's why the crossing can take place over there because they can actually cross one another. They cross over, they form chi hairs, marks, we call them. And if we go to prophase two, what is it going to lie next to? There's no similar chromosome. There's no pair there. There's just a single one. There's a single one. It can't cross with that one. It's different genes. Okay. It's different chromosomes. It's not homologous chromosomes. It doesn't code for the same thing. So in that case, there's nothing for it to cross over with. So crossing over only happens in prophase one. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go back to the next question. Let's just try quickly to finish that question uh, two. Okay, then uh, results in genetic variation. There's two things, random arrangement and crossing over. So that's A, both A and B for 2.6. And then 2.7, chromosomes lengthen to form the chromatin network. Okay, no. Uh, Chromosomes lengthen to form the chromatin network. Uh, that will happen metaphase, anaphase. That actually happens during telophase. That happens during telophase. So for 2.7, that is neither. Um, so it's none. It's not one of those two. Chromosomes will lengthen to form chromatin network. Happens in telophase, not metaphase or anaphase. No, sir. Yes. So I want, I want to ask, do we have to know grade, grade 10 mitosis for grade 12? No, uh, only the introduction we gave. And uh, they do ask sometimes the, the differences between meiosis and mitosis. Uh, but that's normally the, the question is to have the differences between the two, like they have over there. So you must be able to give a table of differences between the two. 
Okay, so and um, around five mark. What's the what's some um, random arrangement, sir? Random arrangement. Let's quickly go to the top uh, during meter phase one, and then I'll show you random arrangement over there. Okay, so here we are with meter phase one. Now these two chromosomes are lying in a specific position. They can, but they can lie on either side of the. They can lie on either side of the equator there, and because they can lie on either side of the equator, we call it random arrangement. And it, it creates genetic diversity because you, because it can lie on any side. Um, so when it splits up, it splits up into different cells in the end, creating genetic diversity. So the fact that they can lie on either side of the equator over there creates, um, well, they call it random arrangement. It's actually a very bad word um, because any arrangement wouldn't be random, but yeah. Um, that's the word they use, random arrangement, because the chromosomes can lie on either side of the equator during meter phase one. So what does bivalent mean, sir? Bivalent is the same as a homologous pair. What, a, what is okay, a homologous sir. pair? That's a homologous pair. So it's two chromosomes that are lying next to each other that's got the same, and they've got the same genetic material. Um, and so the other word that we call them is a bivalent. Is the other word? Okay, so, and um, the the two chromosomes in a bivalent pair are from um, a paternal and a maternal side, right? Yes. So this would All right, so, so, be dad, and that could be mom. Yes, yeah, so, sir. So then, um, when they're randomly arranged, yes. does one hemisphere have only the male um, genes because what happened before that during pro phase one already is this crossing over crossing over happens before we get random arrangement and so because crossing over it's already mixing the genes once and by having it gone and going through random arrangement we mix it twice it's like stirring a copy the one way around and then stirring the opposite direction clockwise first and then anti-clockwise second create more diversity but so it's all of it's you so what's the point of making diversity in yourself because when you when you're passing on the genes in your sperm we don't know which sperm is going to fertilize which egg cell so that sperm can contain any one of those let's go to um telophase uh to show that to you you see that neither one of these look the same they all look the same they all look different. And each one of these are going to form a sperm cell. And any one of those four, and this is only four, we're not even talking about the fact that when we release sperm, we release about 100 million sperm. Each of them with their own genetic code or their own genetic mixtures of what was inside of you. Because you only give away half of what you have. But it's not always the same half. It's a mixture of the half. Oh, all right, sir. So you. But... Sorry, sir. No, I didn't say anything. Okay, so your genes are then, so they mix up your genes, and um, separate them to form different sperm cells. Yes. That way, there's a lot of variation within that. And um, variation in each sperm. Yes, yeah, so, because I'm also quite confused when I think of it when I, I see like one homologous pair and then in one, one of those is from the father and one, one of those is from your mother. So I kind of think of it as um, <clears throat> crossing over of your parents and of your parents' genes to form. That, that's exactly what it is. But then, uh, but it's yours, so before how's... You, before you pass it on to your offspring. But then, so where, where, where do you fit in then? You remember like, that you are your a sperm. mixture of your grandparents' genes when they... And remember that you only receive half a copy from your dad and only half a copy from your mom, mom to make up what you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. So within that, it's 
are from your parents. Okay. Okay, so later in this year, when we talk about evolution, what we are going to do is we're also going to discuss the fact that, um, uh, that there's various things creating. So I'm just taking a look at who is so rude outside here. Okay. Now, 